on social media and stuff. So yeah. well done. Uh, the best Thank is yet you. to come. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. So the floor is yours, sir. I'm going to let you do your thing. That, that That's a wrong thing to say to a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> That, 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 that right. speaks volume because I know you. So I'm like, you know what? Let me get out of the way, sir. <laughs> no problem. No problem. But, but before you go, let's pray together. Let's pray together Amen. and then you can, you can step out if you want to. Okay. Father, thank you very much for Pastor Luke, uh, for you. Pastor Namsa. Thank you for Kingdom Influence Organization. Thank you. Thank you for the different uh, vessels or vehicles you've committed to them, e.g. Yes, God's Lord. girls and especially men on fire. Yes, Lord. Lord, six is the number of man. Yes. Uh, it's the day where you created Adam mm -hmm. and you said to him that you had put this amazing ecosystem at his disposal mm -hmm. and his job was now to tend and to keep it. Amen. Father, I believe that as they as they celebrate in the sixth year, mm -hmm. it means they're entering the seventh. Amen. Uh, they're entering the year of perfection, of completion, of your divine yes. touch. Amen. Let the wisdom, the grace, the skill and the aptitude to correctly tend and keep what you have called them to be released in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And to everybody listening today, Father, morning, afternoon, evening, all around the world, let the breath of heaven blow through this auditorium virtually. Mm -hmm. Anoint the speaker, but also anoint the hearers. Mm -hmm. Communicate your truth, prophetically activate your purpose. Mm -hmm. Heal, save, deliver, transform, reform, inform, and conform us to your will. We give you honor, thanks, and praise in the matchless name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. You. Before I, before you go, am I okay vo volume wise? Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. You're perfect. Yeah. All righty. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'll try and finish within the next three hours. I'm only joking, Pastor Luke. <laughs> right. So, um, everybody, at men on fire, men and the women who love us, welcome. Uh, to this amazing uh, virtual space. I will talk probably a little slower than some of you. I'm probably a little less animated than some of you might be used to from me. Uh, it's because I'm still getting my energy levels back under me. Uh, if this had been almost any other person, almost any other ministry, I might have canceled today. Uh, but these are my family and I love them with my heart. So I wasn't going to do that. But I also believe that I have a word from the Lord for you. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do. Some of you who are used to me preaching are probably used to me going a little bit deep with scriptures. Today, I'm going to read one scripture and then talk. Uh, I will do my best. I can guarantee. Let's see what the comments are saying. I will do my best uh, not to get deep into any Hebrew or Greek. Ah, there the comments are. Not to get into any Hebrew or Greek stuff uh, because I just want to have a conversation. You know, there's a time to preach and there's a time to connect. Uh, and I want to connect with you today. So listen and also do me a favor. If there's anybody who you know needs to be watching or listening to this, any man or any woman who you know has a man in her life, a son, a father, a brother, a friend or a husband or a spouse, uh, send them the link right now. Right. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, on, if you're watching via YouTube to the Men on Fire channel, subscribe right now. If you're watching by Facebook and you haven't liked and followed their Facebook page, do that right now uh, and uh, assist them in getting the message that God has communicated, a vision, sorry, God has communicated to their hearts out into the world space. Pastor Nomsa says you love the Greek. Well, let, let's be let's be uh, let's be British today. By the way, I got my British flag here, so uh, up Britain. Right. So, if you want to turn with me in your Bible to the Book of Judges, chapter thirteen. Thank you, Jesus. Judges, chapter thirteen. Uh, and I am going to, um, for the sake of time, I'm, one second, no, 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 not that, yeah. For the sake of time, uh, I am going to read a few verses and then explain to you the rest of the chapter, if that's okay. So, uh, we're going to start from Judges 13, chapter 10. The Bible says, and the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man has appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. Judges 10, 13, 10. The woman made haste. The woman made haste. Thank God the Bible is, is, uh, is you know, Bible has no problem uh, with gender roles or with gender identity, sorry. You know, so the Bible is very 
comfortable using words like man and woman. And I am too. And showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man has appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, are you the man that spoke unto the woman? Now, if, if, if this was any other context, we might be worried. Are you the dude who's been hidden up on my wife? But that's not what's going on here. The man in question, for those of you who know the story, is an angel who had appeared to uh, Manoah's wife, Samson's mother, and given her a prophecy about the kind of child she was about to bear. And she told her husband, I had this encounter, right? Uh, and... And being so excited about the information that she left out the details. You know, uh, one of the interesting things we're going to see in a moment is the role of a father or man, sorry, as a priest. The fire on the altar. Every altar needs a priest. Uh, Pastor Shepherd did a great job in explaining the priesthood and quoting the scripture from Leviticus about how the fire on the altar must never go out. So I'm not going to bother relaying his foundation. P.S. Great job. Love you, man. And Manoah literally realizes that conversation did not release everything we needed to. Manoah is, 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 is in, his, in his priestly office, gets that we need one more conversation with this guy. God has released the word. God has released a promise. God has given his mind for our family, for our home, our nation, our ministry, our generation. But there is, there is a transaction that needed to occur as part of this that was missed. Okay. And so Manoah, I'm going to jump back to verse 8 now to read you verse 8. Manoah, Bible says, Manoah entreated the Lord and says, Oh my Lord, let the man of God who you sent come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened, verse 9, to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So here is a man who is correctly placed, trained, and engaged. Let me repeat. He's correctly placed. Men need to be placed to play the role of a priest. He's correctly trained. You are born male. You are trained to be a man. And if you're on the comment section, don't leave me all by myself here today. Holler at me in the comment section. You are born male, but becoming a man is a training process, which is why we should be very, 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 very empathetic to a generation of men that the world is assaulting and attacking because they have not been trained. We're going to come to that in a second. And thirdly is the word engaged. So as a man, God places you somewhere that he has hopefully trained you for and requires you to engage. And we see this man acting out his God-given role to perfection. First of all, Manoah is not upset that God chose to speak to him or chose to speak through his wife. Y'all are quiet in the comment sections. Okay. Manoah doesn't say to his wife, which way went the spirit of God from me to you that he's talking to you about our son? Manoah is not insecure in his masculinity. Manoah is not a chauvinist. Uh, Manoah does not believe that his wife can only confirm what God has said to him. I, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be kind here, you know. Manoah is secure enough in his masculinity and has probably, I'm, I'm, I'm reading between the lines here, has probably trained or discipled or led his wife. Or if she if, if she is quote unquote the more spiritually astute has affirmed and supported and covered the dealings of God with her, that he is comfortable 
and confident in receiving a word from God through her. Manoah is a leader. And this works for your wife at home, your spouse, your fiance, if you're an unmarried man looking to be married. But it also works if you're a leader in the body of Christ, uh, looking after the bride of Christ, your leader in the marketplace, your politician, uh, a, a legislator, a, an entrepreneur, whatever it is. This is a man who has empowered the people he leads enough to trust their acumen in discerning the agenda of God for his jurisdiction. But he is also wise enough to know that while he can delegate transaction, he cannot delegate responsibility. So even though God speaks to his wife, God speaks to his associate pastor, God speaks to his manager at work where he's the senior manager, God speaks to someone in his constituency, but no one understands that he ultimately is responsible for birthing the will of God, for what God has for his jurisdiction. Manoah is a priest who takes special care for his altar. And he goes to God and says, Lord, thank you for what you said to my wife. But my, my job, and, and this is the beauty of leadership. This is the beauty of a man in his role. See, uh, women, you know, I love you guys. And anybody who's been around me knows that I'm the number one male fighter for women's liberation. I, I call myself a godly male feminist. No, I don't mean toxic femini femininity. I mean uh, an advocate for the quote-unquote equality because equal doesn't mean identical. We're equal in value. We're equal in essence. We're equal in, in, in priority to God, but we're not identical in function. We're not identical in order of function. Uh, a leader doesn't mean you are more important than who or what you lead. The captain of a football team is very rarely the most gifted player on the team. Messi being an, Messi being and the man who died recently, uh, we pray for his family, Diego Armando Maradona, being a few uh, exceptions. Usually, the captain is slightly less gifted than some of the other members of the team, but is a person with a per or has a personality that lends itself to structure, direction, inspiration, and being able to galvanize the troops. And so it 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 fitted God's agenda to divide Genesis 1 tells us, divide his nature, his essence, his commonwealth into two containers, male and female. The Bible says God created him, created them, male and female. In essence, God took his image and split it into two. Put one in the male gender and one in the female gender. And I'm not just talking about anatomically, I'm talking about intellectually and psychologically. We are built different for a reason. And as is usually the case, uh, Manoah's wife here is Maria uh, Kusinda Labahadela. I'm trying not to feed into a stereotype here, but just work with me for a second, all right? Just work with me for a second. Uh, Manoah's wife, like many of the women in the body of Christ, is, is, is intuitively gifted. She, she's the one who can connect with God. She's the one who has the vision. She's the one who the angel appears to. But notice it's interesting that unlike several other women in scripture, the Bible leaves out her name. Isn't it interesting? that The Bible that is very, very careful to tell us about the identity of several other women doesn't see the need to mention Manoah's name or Manoah's wife's name. We're told Samson's mother's name. We're told John the Baptist's mother's name. We're told Moses' mother's name. But Samson's mother's name in this chapter is kept a secret. The message is this, man, listen. God was talking to Manoah. God was dealing in this case. In this case, the person heaven is trying to draw attention to is this man who is a leader of his family. And God is saying to us men, when he puts us in charge of something, a home, a church, a community, a nation, a generation, we can delegate activity. We don't delegate responsibility. Manoah is engaged enough to understand that when God is dealing with his wife, he is ultimately responsible 
for the carrying out of the will of God that has been entrusted in reception and even in activity to someone else. His wife was going to get pregnant. His wife was going to carry the baby. His wife saw the angel. His wife heard the voice of God. In essence, man, can God trust you to steward his dealings in the life of another as though he was dealing with you directly? Joseph, Mary's going to see the angel. Mary's going to carry Jesus. Mary's the one who, who, who uh, uh, people who get it wrong are going to worship in the future. Mary's the one who's going to live long enough to be at the foot of the cross. Mary is the one who has the divine encounter. But can I, oh, somebody ask yourself, uh, Maria, no, 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 ask yourself. Just say, Lord, give us men. God, give us good men. God, give us godly men. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. What manner of man is this who can hear that his fiance is pregnant by the Holy Ghost and can spend nine months or however long he was married to her after they got married and not sleep with her one day? who can care for the baby of God, the dealing of God, the vision of God. God, make me that kind of man with whom you can put vision in someone else's belly and step back and say, Israel, this is Luke's vision. This is Olimide's passion. This is Nomsa's calling, but pray for it, steward it. Hear from me, lead it into Egypt when Pharaoh wants to kill it, bring it back. Teach it to be a carpenter. Raise it through its bar mitzvah. Take it to the temple for, for the census. Look for it. I'm talking about what Joseph did for Jesus when it's lost. Teach it the Torah. Raise it to become a rabbi. But it's not your seed. That's the kind of fire we're talking about today. That's the kind of man the world needs. You hear me, somebody? If you're married to that bay thing, that boo thing that you 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 you, you caught up all night and sent flowers till her house began to stink with dying petals, and you did all that, and now she said I do, and now she's locked up in a house with you, especially in a pandemic. Honey, hear me. I'm telling you, this is your job. Can God give that woman vision, purpose? that doesn't necessarily bear your fingerprint and trust you to engage with it and be responsible for filling in the blanks and saying, honey, I love your vision. However, there's something missing. We need to go back to God. And Man Manoah doesn't tell his wife, you go back and pray. He prays and says, God, send that messenger again. There's details we missed. Maria Kutabadi. God, give us men. If God called you to pastor a church or oversee churches like I humbly get to do, when that young man or young woman comes up and says, God, God put this in my heart. Your job is to fast and pray and counsel and war and guide and direct and when necessarily rebuke and be responsible for purifying that vision. Like he called you to it yourself. Oh, I know I'm preaching better than you guys are talking back to me in the comment section. And so let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the scripture. Thank you, Jesus. I'm very tempted to show you what Manoah's name means in the Hebrew, but I won't because I made a promise. But you go do your own research. And so Manoah entreated the Lord and says, Oh, my Lord, let the man of God which you send come back again and teach us, verse 8, what we shall do that the child shall be born. What we shall do unto the child, meaning how do we steward this thing? God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel came again to the woman. My God. <laughs> what do you do as a man when God keeps answering your prayer through someone else? What do you do? When God keeps responding to your spiritual transactions by giving another person an encounter. My God, what do you do 
when someone else is the beneficiary of your altar? Do you get jealous? Do you get competitive? Do you get territorial? Do you, do you get condescending? Or are you secure enough to understand that your, your report card as a man is not necessarily your success, but is the success of everybody else within your jurisdiction and your circle of concern. And I'm talking about way more than marriage. Hear me by the spirit. I'm talking about way more than marriage here, folks. Way, 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 way more than marriage. This the, m- marriage is just scratching the surface of what I'm talking about here. My God. God, give us political leaders who are not concerned with their favorability ratings, but who lead countries and regions so that the people they serve in leadership can fulfill their potential. Leaders who are pre, who are, who are, what's the word I'm looking for now? Leaders who are content to be more famous when they're dead and gone than when they're alive in office. Platform builders, people who see fulfillment in being sometimes the unseen and sometimes seen, but sometimes the unseen architect of another person's exposure. And elevation. Manoah prays. And God sends the angel back to his wife. (laughs) And here we see the difference. Between Manoah. And his forefather Adam. The Bible tells us. Clearly. That Adam was in the house Adam was right beside Eve when the snake spoke to her the Bible says Eve took the fruit and ate we don't hear Adam say no we don't hear Adam rebuking the serpent we don't hear Adam saying get away from my wife Adam is right there standing akimbo and and I love my forefather I respect him I understand that he was a human being. I'm not being arrogant. or I'm just giving you the facts. Adam was right there while who and what God gave into his care was being taken for a ride. Adam was an absent yet present priest. Adam was the father who didn't leave home, who watched his children get influenced by television and did nothing. Adam was the man who brought home the bacon, who watched his wife wither away emotionally and fall prey to gossiping, malingering friends and did nothing. Adam was a pastor who showed up every Sunday and preached, but said nothing, did nothing, prayed nothing, engaged nothing, while the serpent came in through the back door and wrecked the people under his control. But we see Manoah. Manoah is a man we must learn from. Manoah's not even there. And the Bible says, the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, behold, the man has appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife, verse 11, and came to the man and said, are you the man that spoke unto this woman? Manoah says, hey, she's spoken for. She's got a husband. This church has a pastor. This borough has a mayor. This state has a go- oh, Shabbatia. <coughs> this state has a governor. This generation has a prophet. These churches have an apostle. If you're going to deal with them, even as a representative of God, while I am not insecure enough 
as to begrudge them their right to engage for themselves. I'm also not irresponsible enough not to do my own homework and stand in the gap and ensure that the dealings of the spirit realm with who and what I am responsible for are kosher. Pastor Namsa, this is not a women's conference or I would have gone there. You know, if this were a women's conference, I would have, I'm glad you put that up there. You know, if somebody can, can stick Pastor Numsa's comment on the screen, since it's a woman who put it there so I can go there, the woman made haste and ran, you know, it's hard to cover people. It's hard to be a priest for someone who will not bring you to their altar. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's hard to cover a wife who doesn't acknowledge your priesthood. It's hard to cover a church that doesn't acknowledge your shepherdhood. It's hard to cover a, a, a leaders who don't acknowledge your apostolicity. And so there is something to be said for the thing of the person who is being covered for engaging correctly when you have a, 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 a positioned and trained and engaged priest. It's your job to take advantage of him or her if she's female. And so the woman made haste and ran. That must be said. But we're focusing on the man today. Both the, both the, the gender man, but also the man as a prophetic metaphor of a covering of a priest. And so you could be a woman and fit this description for your children, for your church, for your, for your nation, for your community if you lead. And the man says, I am. The angel said, I am. Excuse me, verse 12. And Manoah said, now let your word come to pass. How shall, this is, I mean, this is just, in place of child here, in verse 12, in place of child, put vision, dream, calling, destiny, purpose, gift, anointing, assignment, Mandate, country, generation, city, borough, state, whatever it is. How shall we order the child? And not what? How shall we do unto him? I have learned in the home. Be married 10 years and counting. My wife and my children may be responsible for the what. I'm responsible for the how. Let me repeat. I've learned as a pastor now, I've either pastored a church as its senior pastor or overseen churches for at least 11 and a half years now. Prior to that, I served as an, as an associate and an assistant with other people. And so I know both sides of this role here. When I was an associate pastor, I could be responsible for the what. And I know this, this goes against how we've been trained. We've been trained that leaders are, it's the job of a leader to receive vision. And then it's the job of the people to run with it. That's true. But, but, but work with me for a second here. High level leaders are people who have become comfortable with vision coming through other people. Let me repeat. You are not a, a, a high level leader if you must initiate or receive every single piece of the what. But you are an irresponsible leader if you don't lay the foundation for the how. And I don't mean the doing of the what. I mean the culture, the environment, the, the details, the, 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 the intangible atmosphere. And so as a leader, I have no problem with someone else saying, God wants us to do this. That's fine. My job is to, first of all, is to create the environment where somebody else can hear God in the first place. But secondly, to create the environment, create the, the arena, create, I don't need the limelight. I don't need the stage. I don't need the headlines. I don't need the activity, but I must first on my knees. Secondly, 
with actions, maybe financially, with resource, whatever. It's my job to create the ecosystem where the what can reach its full potential. Manoa says, how do we order the child? Order. And again, I really wish I could go into the Hebrew and the Greek, but I ain't gonna. How do we order the child? And not what shall we do unto him? How shall we do unto him? Meaning, what culture? What atmosphere? What, what reality? What ecosystem do we have to control? Do I, as the leader, as the priest, have to license in the atmosphere for this boy to fulfill his potential? Verse 13, And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. In essence, I had given details to the woman before, but now that you have asked for the ecosystem, let me break it down to you. She may not eat of anything that comes out of the vine. Right? Meaning, now notice, earlier on, he told the woman, I, have, I don't have time to go there, but he told the woman in verse 4, don't drink wine or strong drink, and don't eat any unclean thing, and don't let a razor come near his head. That's what he said to Manoah's wife. He says to Manoah, she may not eat of anything that comes out of the vine. Neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing, all that I commanded her, let her observe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Manoah's responsibility is to his wife. That's the point I'm trying to make. Not one time does God say anything to Manoah about Samson in this verse. God is saying, I'm going to hold you responsible for helping this woman correctly carry what I'm going to put on the inside of her. And if you notice when we talk about the body of Christ in scripture, it's a woman, it's a she. When we talk about countries and nations, we use the word she. When we talk about organizations or entities, we use, in essence, most vehicle destinies, a church, a country, a city, a, con a company, most destiny vehicles are referred to with the female pronoun. Manoah. Your job is how do you lead or govern this female entity? Wife, church, organization, destiny, entity, country, stuff of the like. How do you lead it? How do you help it maintain discipline? How do you hold it accountable? How do you create the atmosphere, the culture around it, such that everything God wants it to fulfill, it is able to fulfill? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel something. And 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 I I, I know I said I wasn't going to go into Hebrew or Greek, but I just really I, I really have to say this here. Just one. Can I have just one? Just one, Pastor Nomsa, just one. The word manoah in the Hebrew means rest. The word manoah means rest. Let me repeat, because somebody needs to hear this. The word manoah means rest. Manoah is the kind of man, the kind of priest, 
where you get it, right? Jovar, you're right. When it comes to a child, yes, that would be parenting, discipline, but also identity. Uh, for instance, every day I tell my sons I'm proud to be your father. Every day, I, every night I tell them you were wanted, you were fought for, uh, you were prayed for, you're not an accident. So be yes, it means, it means giving that thing, whether it's a child or a vision or destiny or purpose or an anointing or calling the ministry, giving that thing the ecosystem the emotional, spiritual, and natural ecosystem it needs to fulfill its full potential. Just look at God. I got 10 minutes. Manoa means rest. When you see unrest in the world, there's a man either not positioned, trained, or engaged. Let me repeat. When you see unrest, when you see upheaval, if you see riots on the streets, even when they are valid, because believe me, I, I am not one of them Christians or leaders who say, no, 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 I believe in the people's right to say something is going wrong. But the fact that something went wrong in the first place, there's a man usually, usually a male, who was either out of position or was in position but wasn't adequately trained or had the training but wasn't correctly engaged. When a man is policing his altar as a priest, like Pastor Shepherd taught us an hour ago, the end result is rest. And Pastor Nam said, this is why that woman was confident to run to her husband. This is a man who has such an atmosphere around him and aura the effect he has on everything and everywhere he is is rest everybody around him is confident everybody around him is empowered everything i can't explain this in words but starting with the home my wife used to tell me years ago when you're not around we we can tell i it, it didn't make sense to me till so I started to meditate on what she was talking about. Did anything go wrong? No. Were the kids misbehaving? No. But but the, the, there is a sense of stability and tranquility, a confidence, a, a serenity, a serendipity that is released when a priestly man is correctly positioned, trained, and engaged. So Manoah's name means rest. Let me finish this real quick. And then this is the key. We're talking about letting the fire on the altar never go out. Manoah then shows us the true root of his success. Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray you, let us detain you till we have made ready a kid for thee. Uh, you ain't going to give us this kind of word and we're just going to let it slide by. I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you guys how I live my life. My friends will tell you, my friends, even some of the people who refer to me as a spiritual leader or father of covering, you call me and you say something to me that correctly pinpoints the dealings of God for my life in my next season, that I discern the weight of God behind. The next question is, send me your bank account. And, and if there's anybody listening who can prove that I'm lying? Let the people know in the comment section. But anyway, let's keep moving. That's just by the way. Some of you have missed out on activating quicker than you would have. It will still happen, but you can accelerate the dealings of God this way. Just saying. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, even if you detain me, I will not eat your bread. If you want to do something, do it unto the Lord. Look, Manoah did not know he was talking to an angel. He thought he was just talking to a prophet. Verse 17, and Manoah said unto the angel, what is your name? That when these things come to pass, we may do the honor. This is a man who understands the place of honor. 
And notice, he is honoring someone who transacted with someone he's responsible for. I got to rush because of time. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the Bible says the angel did wondrously in the King James. There must have been some sort of physical demonstration of glory, sparks, fire, whatever it was. And it came to pass when the flame went up towards heaven from off the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. And the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Manoah then says, oh, we've seen an angel, we're going to die. His wife's like, honey, come on, because we, we still need our wives to top some sense. Dude, if he was going to kill us, we'd have died by now. But look at this point here. This is a man who is obviously not unfamiliar with the ways of the altar. The word has come. The prophecy has been released. He has correctly led his family to a transaction with God or his church, his ministry, his city, his business, whatever. But on the other side, there is an altar that is required. And the Bible says the angel taking advantage of the altar Manoah builds, does wondrously and ascends to heaven in the flame. Ha! Ah, I wish I had a keyboardist around here. The angel ascends to heaven in the flame. We heard from Pastor Shepherds, God makes his angels ministering spirits and flames of fire. Fire, prophetically, and, and different sermon for a different day, is not just about the goosebumps. It is a passageway into the spirit. Let me repeat. Fire, prophetically, is a doorway to the spirit. Demonic books were burnt by fire. The book itself was not the demonic entity. But the freedom came when the fire traveled behind the veil. Altars and sacrifices were put through fire. The Bible says they ascend to heaven as a sweet smell and savor. Fire is the conduit for spiritual connectivity. As seen clearly here where it is that fire that that angel ascends to heaven through. So an angel ascends to heaven by fire. Our offerings ascend to heaven by fire. Our prayers ascend to heaven by fire. Priest, man, what if your job was to create, maintain, and sustain portals of spiritual entry and reception? where you and those within your jurisdiction could have clear, direct, and unfettered access to the spirit realm? What if, for those of you who are saying, I don't know what my roles are as a man in this generation anymore, let me give you one role. Everything you are responsible for, it is your job to create, maintain, and sustain legal portals of access to the godly realm of the spirit through and for, such that everything else under your jurisdiction has unfettered access to the presence, the glory, and the wonders of God. Does that sound like something you could dedicate the rest of your life towards? If so, let's pray. Father, I just lift my hands tonight, this afternoon, this evening, wherever around the world your people are. I feel, I just feel, I feel your breeze. 
your gently crackling flame in this virtual room. Father, you raised 12 men and the world never recovered for your glory. Today, tonight, raise a generation of Manoah-like men. Custodians of altars for homes, churches, ministries, organizations, regions, cities, nations, and generations. Beyond everything else, protection, provision, ordering, creating an atmosphere, these are all necessary. Will it bring us back to the understanding of our primary objective? To be the patriarchs of society. Before there were prophets and kings, before there were Levitical priests, the first biblical manifestation of the priesthood office was the family patriarch, was the tribal patriarch, the Abrahams, the Isaacs, the, 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 the Jacobs, the Moses, the Noahs, the men of the altar. Raise men of the altar, Lord, in our generation. Men who license heaven's activity in the earth. By our consecration, our relationship with you, our devotion to you. Train us, then position us, and then cause us to engage correctly. And restore the brokenness and the unrest that has plagued humanity. Let us be Manoah in name, places of rest where wives and children and parishioners and, and mentees and staff and constituents politically can find rest under the umbrella of your wings through the fire of our altars. So you can do wondrously through the altars we erect. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 Wow. I, I just need to take a moment, sir. Wow. That was just so deep. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so I much. I literally to the second, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly 2.30. Before, before you go, sir. Yeah. Uh, Jova asked this question on the screen. I don't know if you can read it. Mm-hmm. Is asking about what is the root of success as Christian fathers, parent, any good strategies, tips you can share now? Okay, let me answer this real quick. First of all, the root of success is what I just talked about today. Uh, so that's that's what I spent today. I, I literally, I thought about how do I do it? And I decided to tell it as a story. Hmm. I'm glad somebody has asked the question. That's the story. Well, put it this way, this is the story of my own journey as a father and a parent mm -hmm. and a husband so i can only talk for what i see yeah but this is this is the standard i hold myself to mm -hmm. um first of all i have to be secure enough to let my wife and as they grow older my children have their own shine mm -hmm. it doesn't have to all start and end with me uh my job is to raise train empower disciple lead them so that they can they can do great things for themselves. They can hear God for themselves. They can have a vision for themselves. But it's also my responsibility to govern the atmosphere of my home to make sure that they can fulfill their, their destiny. It starts in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife shouldn't be dealing with demonic attacks on our home every day. She, she, she kneels down to pray. That should be my job. Mm -hmm. She should be able to hear God talk to her about her career, her ministry, uh, uh, you know, the things she wants to do next. She should be able to to develop as a preacher, as a career woman. Here, God talk to her about our children. It's my job primarily to provide that canopy. And the same thing for outside the home in church and in ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it's my job to create an altar where I put it this way. If things are happening to my home that are of a negative variety, that are always taking me by surprise, there's a problem. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll give you a quick example. You guys heard that I just, uh, I, I was ill with COVID for a week. 
yeah. two days before the first symptom in our household, because it was literally a household thing. Uh, oh, the children weren't symptomatic because, you know, it doesn't affect children. But my mom is living with us. She had symptoms. I had symptoms. Uh, my wife was negative, but she was positive for the antibodies, meaning she'd mm -hmm. been an symptomatic. She must have had it in the past without symptoms. Two or three days before the first symptom showed up, I told my wife at night, I said, I was praying this evening, something walked into the room and put a coat on me. Mm. And I began to shiver. I didn't develop symptoms that night, but I spent hours in prayer. And I said to her, COVID's around the corner. We need wow. to pray. And to the glory of God, no hospitalizations, no breathing issues, nothing. My mom, you know, has a couple of things that people, we, we were worried that if she had it, she had some underlying factors. It, everything was just spectacular. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday while I was giving God thanks, I said, what if, what if mom ended up really, and while I was praying that night, I keep remembering God was saying to me, God said, your mother is in your home. She's under your jurisdiction while mm -hmm. she's in your home. You're the leader of this home. So your jurisdiction is, is responsible for everybody in its in its boundaries. Right. And yeah. so as a, as a father, it doesn't mean that nothing bad will happen to your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you should be proactively responsible and engaged. It shouldn't be catching you by surprise all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, why mm -hmm. is this child misbehaving? Why is this one doing this? You know, so mm -hmm. we've had a the time where my, one of my children will develop a, a, a character issue and their mother will come to me. I'm like, okay, leave you with me. You mm -hmm. know, six months later, it's gone because that's my primary role. Mm -hmm. Providing, protecting, you know, all those are outworks of that role. Because if you do that priesthood role correctly, the burden to provide, the burden to discipline, the burden to provide emotional support and a sense of identity, that will come with it. Mm -hmm. But the first and primary role is to be the guardian of that gateway spiritually to your house. Wow. So powerful, sir. That was, you know, that was deep. <laughs> oh, my God. I just could just listen to you speak for, you know, God knows how long. But this has been so impactful. Thank you so much, sir, for your wisdom and, you know, just the grace that is upon your life to just share this, uh, it's, you know, I really, really appreciate it, sir. And I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking time out. We give God honor and praise. We give God Amen. honor and praise. My privilege. Amen. Oh, thank, thank you, you sir. Me. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. God bless you, sir. My, my love to Pastor Kunle as he comes on. The Bible says the glory of the latter house should exceed the former. So I'm just praying that this next session is an even higher realm. Yeah. God's thank you. Thank glory. you so much, sir. Hey, thank, thank you. so much. love you, my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank I enjoyed you. the message. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> bless you guys. Take care. All right. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, Pastor K. Good afternoon, Luke. How are you doing? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Better Fire. Twenty twenty. Yeah, I think I've been in every single one of them. <laughs> yes, you have not missed one. <laughs> yeah. So you know we are we are so glad to have you again this year. You yeah. know, without wasting so much time, can you just you know give a brief brief introduction to our viewers about who you are, so they can understand who's Pastor K. Pastor K is pastor of Faith House Church, husband of uh, Pastor Bumi Konyo Latunji, who's also co-pastor of Faith House Church. Mm -hmm. that's it <laughs> wow okay thank you so much sir yeah. so you know me I'm, I'm just i'm just gonna be at the background just listening in taking notes as usual uh and i'm just gonna let god do his work through you sir i really appreciate you being on Before this you leave, i want to together I want okay to take some time all right okay I like, I like the the action i want to hear your tones <laughs> yes sir i'm Praise ready god. i'm yeah, ready so i'm gonna pray for all the men and then yeah. you know, everyone watching, not just the men, everyone watching. Amen. And, you know, we've been hearing messages yeah. on, on keeping ourselves on the, the fire on the altar. Yes. And I want to believe for the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. So that we're not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Amen. The wisdom to actually take the principles that have been yeah. taught. And mm -hmm. I, I, that is still going to be taught today and mm -hmm. leave them out. Mm -hmm. Because that's what really matters. Okay. Amen. So Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. For your word that has been coming for today. We thank yes, you for the ministers that have given us Abbasha. counsel. Abbasha. And Father God, we acknowledge the presence Abbasha. of your spirit that dwells within us, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel. We, the word says, as many as are led by the spirit, are the sons of God. Father, we call for the influence and leading of your spirit. We call for your spirit to rise up within us with direction to our spirit and illumination to our minds. We pray for insight and counsel the things together and to execute the vision that you are revealing to our hearts right now. Father, God, I pray for everyone. Let us be, let our hearts be set up, blame the wisdom, set on fire with the wisdom, Kitana <laughs> 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 